Hello and welcome to another whiteboard training video. I am Isaiah Hankel with Cheeky Scientist. If at any time you want to learn more, go to PhDsGetHired.com. Today we're talking about why hiring of PhDs is up 500%, but at the same time, you may still not be hired. What's going on? So we have over 10,000 PhDs in our career training programs, and we track the transition rates of these PhDs. And what we've seen over the past 18 to 24 months is a 500% increase. Yes, 500%, we know how statistics work, we have PhDs. 500% increase in hiring for PhDs. So what's going on? Obviously the global economy overall is increasing. Hiring rates in most countries have been increasing. There's outliers of course, but the overall hiring rates worldwide are up. And guess where the hiring is happening? It's not happening in manufacturing, although you might hear about manufacturing a lot on the news. Um, those jobs are just moving around. The actual raw increases in jobs are coming in the STEM fields. Okay, and that's not just science, technology, engineering, engineering and math. It's life sciences, physical sciences, social sciences, education, economics, engineering, um, anything that follows a scientific method. This means that you as a PhD, you're more hireable now than you ever have been before. I'm gonna give you some extra reasons why you're so hireable. But for now, you just have to know hiring is way up. If you're still struggling to get a job, these six reasons are likely the reasons why. Number one, you're invisible online. You're invisible online. What does this mean? It means that you may have a LinkedIn profile. You might be uploading resumes online, but you're not hearing anything back. Or you're just getting an automated response saying thank you for your resume and then not hearing anything back. Maybe you have a LinkedIn profile, you followed some tips online, but no recruiters or hiring managers are reaching out to you. If they do reach out, they quickly hang up on you because they think they, they uh, you, you say you need a visa, they hang up. Or they talk to you and then after one phone call, they don't call back. You have a short exchange, it doesn't lead to a job. What's happening? Why are all these other PhDs getting hired but not you? It's because you're invisible. When you upload an application online and you have academic job titles in your resume, guess what? That application is not going in front of a person. They're not going to be able to read it, understand what's going on, understand that you have a PhD, and that's why you have all universities in your work experience, understand that's why you have academic job titles and specific skills, okay? And even locations. Just, just like LinkedIn Recruiter, which we're going to talk about next. It's not programmed to look for academic job titles. And so you're pulling out your job titles and bolding them under your work experience, and it's looking at the bolded text because the AI is smart enough to know that bolded text is important, and it doesn't recognize graduate research assistant. It doesn't recognize postdoctoral fellow. It doesn't understand why you have multiple universities. Most people have one university, and for that reason, you're being weeded out. So instead of uploading your resume in that format, in a chronological format, you need to change it to a functional resume. We just wrote a blog article about this. You can look at it at cheekyscientist.com backslash blog um, or forward slash blog. Uh, but for now, just know that you need to write a functional resume. Your LinkedIn profile, same thing. If you go to LinkedIn Recruiter, which is a separate LinkedIn, there's three major search fields for employers, location, skills, and job titles. Most of you aren't even putting the locations where you want to work. You think that if you leave off the locations, you're more likely to show up in search results. You're not. You have to put your top one or two locations on your LinkedIn profile, preferably your headline and whether or not you're willing to relocate. You're also not highlighting enough transferable skills, which are the non-technical skills, or technical skills throughout your entire LinkedIn profile, and you're certainly not putting job titles. You have to put your job titles, the job titles you're interested in, in your headline throughout LinkedIn. You don't say that you've had those jobs, but you have to put the job titles on there so you actually show up in the search results. Finally, you gotta turn on your recruiter button. You actually have to tell LinkedIn that you want to show up in LinkedIn Recruiter on the other LinkedIn. There's a button for this. You can Google it. It's easy to find. Number two, you're not committed. Are you committed to getting a job in industry? Are you really? Or are you just kind of interested in it? Why are you only interested? You need to make a decision. You got to look at the data, realize that there's no jobs for you in academia. Professorships are sharply declining. Full-time professorships will be extinct in five to 10 years. They're being replaced by part-time contractor and adjunct professorships. The data on this is very clear. Doing a postdoc, staying in a postdoc, damages your career. We've talked a lot about data that just came out and was published in Nature, showing that it does not help your career at all. So what are you doing? If you wanna get into industry, you have to commit to it. 
What most PhDs do, unfortunately, and what keeps them from getting hired more than anything else, is that when they get on a phone screen or they go to an interview, they act like industry is just one of their options. They act like working at that company is just one of their options. Because in academia, we are trained as PhD to explore options, to talk about anything, but employers want to test your certainty. They want to test your commitment. So when they ask you questions like, I see you're, uh, you've applied to this position, but would you be open to other positions? They actually don't want you to say yes. They want you to say, I'm interested in doing whatever's best for the company, but I'm the perfect fit for this position. That's what I'm committed to right now. That's what they want to hear. Okay? As a PhD, that doesn't make sense to you. You, uh, you want to seem open and flexible. You want to do whatever the, the employer wants you to do. They're not looking for that. They're looking for you to know what you want and to show commitment to it. They're going to ask you why you're leaving academia and if you have ever would ever consider going back. They're going to make it seem like they're on your side, like they want you to say you'd be interested in going back and you're flexible because they're testing you. They don't want that. They want to see that you're committed to this position. So you need to get in the right frame of mind before talking to an employer and you need to communicate this frame of mind even before talking to an employer. On your resume, on your LinkedIn profile, show you're committed to getting into industry. That's all you want to do and you want to get into this specific type of job. When you talk to a company, you want that job at that company and you're not exploring anything else. That's how you need to come across. And it's easy to do. You're not lying. You don't need to be overly literal here. Every company has pros and cons. So choose the pros for that company and focus on it and tell the employer, I'm committed to working in this position for XYZ reasons, the pros of that company versus the other company. Okay, you have to show that level of commitment. We talk to a lot of employers, a lot of recruiters, and they constantly come back to us with feedback saying, we were going to hire this PhD. We were going to give them $80,000, 90,000, 100,000 euros, pounds a year, but they didn't seem really committed to the role. They didn't seem committed to doing whatever it took to get into this position right now. They didn't even seem like they wanted to relocate. And I'm like, what are you doing? You just missed your chance for, for you to transition into industry, for you to finally say, I have industry experience. My PhD was worth it. I used it to get into a PhD level job because you acted flaky. Show your commitment. Number three, you worship academia. You've been brainwashed by academia to think that it's amazing that you can either do noble work in academia or be paid well and sell out to industry, the dark side. So you're comfortable in academia. You get to kind of set your own schedule. You only have like 10 emails a day. You, you get to explore ideas. You think you're really busy, but you're not, right? You're just comfortable in academia. You don't get paid very well but you kind of get to show up on time, you walk there, you know, there's not a ton of pressure. Maybe it's a little bit of a negative environment. You're just in a little bit of pain. And moderate pain is your worst enemy when you're trying to make a big change in your life or your career. Rationalizing that it's okay because you don't want to get uncomfortable in your job search. You don't want to have to send out hundreds more resumes. You don't want to have to network with people and talk to other people and set up informational interviews. You don't want to have to go on three, four, five different phone screens or interviews every week. It's so much work. You don't want to do it. You'd rather stay comfortable. And so you convince yourself that academia is where real science is done anyway. It's where noble work is done. It's great. And by the way, cheeky scientist, I hate how you demonize academia. All right? Look, there's no future for you in academia. After you got your PhD, you need to make plans for your career. Take your career into your own hands. Be realistic. Stop rationalizing. Realize that you're being paid a third of what you're worth or less, especially if you're a PhD student. Unemployment or a low paying adjunct professorship with no retirement or something similar at best is in your future unless you make a change. Number four, you may be a little bit elitist. It's natural. We get in academia, the ivory tower. We think that what we're doing is so great and so noble. We think we're above anything outside of academia. Like, I'm above the process of having to search for a job. I have a PhD. I've been there. I, I thought that I had a PhD. I'd send a couple of applications, and then Pfizer would come to my lab and be knocking on the door and, and be like, wow, we found you. We've been waiting for you. Didn't happen. I sent hundreds and hundreds of resumes. Didn't hear anything back. I didn't know what was wrong, and I started acting like, well, that's beneath me. Like, if you know, they should be coming to me. Uh, I, I don't know. It was really just a screen for my insecurity which I'm going to talk about next. Like I knew I knew a lot about my specific niche field, but I didn't know anything about industry. And I didn't want to have to start at the bottom of this whole new mountain of knowledge and learn. I didn't want to accept that 
I maybe had made a mistake over the last several years and not learned about business, not learned about how to actually execute a normal job search. Once I finally admitted that, the job search process became a lot easier. So just admit that you don't know what a job search process entails. You are not gonna be the smartest person in the room when it comes to an industry job search. You need help, you need mentorship, you need guidance, you need the right materials. You don't know what you're doing. And when you accept that, and you've done this before, right? Likely to pass your thesis defense, you had to say the words, I don't know. So just say, I don't know with your job search and realize that because of that, maybe you felt a little bit insecure, which is my next point. Number five, you're a little bit insecure. Just by admitting that, you won't be insecure anymore and you'll just realize that you need to gain more knowledge. Once you have the right information, you have the right target, you know where you're going, as a PhD, you're going to get there. But you have to make that mental shift. You have to say, I don't know what I'm doing in my job search. Trying to pull together free information online from different blog articles or articles that aren't PhD specific isn't working. Other PhDs are getting hired. The hiring rates keep increasing for PhDs right now. This is my chance to get into a top job. The market is great for you, but if you don't admit this to yourself, make that mindset shift, you're never gonna get hired. Number six, your strategy is backwards. Most PhDs, they think that getting a job in industries just like the peer review process in academia. You write something, in this case a resume, right, instead of your peer review journal, your draft, you write your resume, you send it in. If the third reviewer likes it, right, they call you in for an interview, which is like an oral defense. And then if you pass your oral defense, you get hired. Because of this, PhDs think, oh, I gotta work on my resume, my LinkedIn profile, that's what happens. I go in for an interview, that's it. Doesn't work that way, okay? Instead, most job searches start, the successful ones start with networking and setting up an informational interview. You talk to an employee that's working at a company that you wanna work for, or at a company in the field you wanna work for. You ask them how they got that job, right? You treat them as, a, um, as an expert, and they'll talk to you, and they'll share everything with you. People, I always use this example, nobody wants to help you move your apartment, especially people that don't, you don't know very well, but they'll give you advice on moving, right? Because they've moved in the past, they'll tell you how, what they did, what, they, what, what mistakes they made, their successes, et cetera. Same thing with a job search. If you just go out to people and ask them to help you get a job, they're likely gonna say no, especially if they don't know you. But if you ask them how they got into their job, they're going to share that information with you, which will help you create a bond. That's what networking is. And informational interviews often lead to phone screens, often lead to that person walking away with your resume and giving it to their hiring manager. We talk a lot about this in the Cheeky Scientist Association. You can learn more about it by going to phdsgethired.com. But for now, you have to know a job search starts with networking, setting up informational interviews, getting referrals, and then you pass along your resume. Then the hiring manager will go to your LinkedIn profile, and then you'll get called into an interview, and then you negotiate your job offer and get hired. You have to understand these six concepts. If you have questions on them, you can ask them below in the comments section. Go to phdsgethired.com, put your name and email on our Cheeky Scientist Association waitlist. We'll send you all of our eBooks, all of our free materials, so you can be part of this increased hiring trend for PhDs. As always, remember your value as a PhD and start thinking and acting like a successful industry professional.